Welcome everybody, Shabbat Shalom. And uh, yeah, it's been a great afternoon, very relaxing. Um, a good time down here where we are. I hope where you are, you had a very relaxing day as well. Let's go ahead and open this up and uh, get after today's message. Father God, we thank you. Praise you for everything that you've given. We ask that you come in, you join us. In fact, you take over the meeting. Father God, we gather together to learn from you. And I ask right now that you would lead and guide and direct the message. Let it be nourishing and uplifting to each and every one that hears. Father, we thank you in advance for the miracles, the anointing, the deliverance, and everything, every form of bondage, every yoke that is shattered. Father, we thank you for it. Be with us, surround us with your presence. In Yeshua's name, amen. All right. This week, and like with a lot of things that, uh, that I do, it go, I go through the week, and certain things kind of kind of get churned up. Well, this week, uh, prayer has been one of the things, and I've come across some things that may challenge uh, some of our traditional beliefs on on what prayer is. Um, and I got to admit, I've had my struggles with prayer. You know, who hasn't? sit there and wonder if your prayers are even going any higher than the ceiling, if you're the only one that hears them. Uh, wonder if they're effective. And I've come across some things that uh, I have changed the way that I look at and, and actually practically apply prayer in my life. And they've been very helpful and quite productive. And so that's where we're going to go today is a little teaching it might be today and next week. We'll see how things go. Uh, I've got enough here and there's so much in prayer. We could spend months on the topic of prayer, just going through the individual uh, scriptures that deal with it. I want to hit a few things that, that uh, drove home with me. And let's see if we can apply those. And then perhaps later on, we'll go a little deeper. Open up right now to Philippians 4.6 as we get started here. Philippians 4.6. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. 4.6. <clears throat> and I'm going to read this. In the Amplified, to start off with, do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition, definite request, with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. Now, if we stop right there, we'll use that as the focus of the teaching today. So, the first natural question, and I'll take this back. There's some senior saints with us that have went through this for years and years and years. You know the answers to all these questions. Bear with me. Uh, I want to do this as a basic intro for folks that may not be as familiar with the subject of prayer. So what is prayer? You know, if we go to Matthew 21:13. There it says that I will make my house a house of prayer. Yeshua is talking about it, but you have made it into a den of thieves. There he's quoting two different passages out of uh, the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 56, 7 and Jeremiah 7, 11. He's talking about a house of prayer. Now we know as we go through this, that today with Yeshua and the dynamic that he created when, when he did what he did on the cross, we 
took the spirit and, and Prophet Darren had been talking about uh, Ichabod, you know, the spirit departed. We've taken God's presence out of the box and moved it into a different container. We now have access. We're, we're told through the Net New Testament narratives that we can boldly approach the throne of grace. Now we have access. The middle wall of partition has been pulled down. We can now have access through the spirit that all the rest of the generations beforehand never had access to. They had to come in. That's what the temple worship system was all about, was a vehicle to be able to touch and approach an unapproachable God and come to his very residence, the spot on this earth, the only spot, the portal, the center of the universe, if you will, at least our universe, this world, that God chose to meet with his people and dwell there. Now, there is no temple. You've heard me say it before. We've been pulled back, but we have access. We have the ability to approach his throne in a different realm and pull and draw from that power into this room, realm. Now, did I give you enough time to find Philippians? I hope so. We, we read that. What is prayer? Prayer is defined, and I did a Google search for these, okay? Prayer is a solemn request for help from God or thanks addressed to God as an act of worship. That's the broad definition of prayer. Within that, you've got a couple other terms that are often used interchangeably and with prayer. Like supplication. What is supplication? That's an old English word that not many of us are familiar with. Supplication is the act of humbly or earnestly begging or asking for something. It's always a request. I mean, when, you're, when your loved one is sick and you're crying out to God, heal my loved one, that's a supplication. When you know things are desperate and you're at your last straw, I guess you could say, and you cry out to God, that's supplication. Okay. Psalm 39, 12. Turn over there. Psalm 39, 12. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee, and a sojourner, as all my fathers were. O spare me, that I may recover strength before I go hence and be no more. You can see there that, uh, get the feeling that David, when he wrote that, was in a desperate spot. He felt alone. He felt uh, betrayed by people that he trusted and loved. He was chased. He was hunted. They were out to take him out. And he cried out to God. That's a good example of a supplication, right? Matthew 26. Another one here. Matthew 26. And verse 36. Get over to it. 2636. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane and said unto the disciples, sit here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then he said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death, tarry ye here and watch with me. 
And he went a little farther and he fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. The quintessential, if you will, supplication. Get me out of this. And yet Yeshua went on later to say, even if this won't pass from me, let your will be done in my life. I'm here. I'm your servant. I'm your son. I'll do what you ask. What needs to be done if there's no other way? Petition, another form of prayer uh, that we see along with that throughout scriptures. It's more of a humble legal request uh, to an authority with power to grant the request or entreaty. It's a defined request, and that's what we've seen in Philippians 4, 6. Make your request known, your, your defined request. Number one thing about prayer we got to remember is that we need to be specific. How many of you have prayed, Father, I need more money? And then you walk outside and you find a penny, you got more money. That penny was more money than you had before. But it's not enough. Lord, I need more money. We need to be specific. We need to pray with a purpose. We can't get a vision in our mind. We can't set a goal if the goal is so nebulous that we don't really know what we need. So the number one thing that I found here lately is that I've got to set a goal. And if the goal doesn't make you just a little nervous, you probably didn't set the goal high enough. You've got to really look for it. You've got to really want it. You've got to set something in motion, whether you call it launching rockets. Prayer is kind of like uh, with these requests, launching a rocket into the atmosphere. Your request is going up. Now, what happens if you don't put enough fuel in the tank or say NASA just launches rockets just to launch rockets? And I guess we'll see where they land. I don't know. I guess we'll let God figure out where to where to splash down and then we'll go get them from there. It doesn't work that way. It's very specific. We need to be more specific in our prayers. But there's a catch to that, too. And we'll get into that in a minute. Some components of prayer, the needs, the supplications, petitions. As we were taught when Yeshua was approached by the boys, teach us to pray. He said, all right, first we start out with worship and thankfulness. That's a big key. We've got to have that heart in our prayers. We've got to have an attitude of gratitude. You've got to show something that elevates your emotions, that brings you up to the level that God operates at. He doesn't operate down here in the gutter. He can pull you out of the gutter, and he can meet you there. But if we want our prayer requests to be truly answered, we've got to come up to his level. All these frequencies that we've got, the, the vibrations of all this, got to be in line. The quantum, the field of quantum physics has proven a lot of what we have taken out of the Bible. And every time I see something, I've done a lot of study in, in the new research on quantum physics. And every time that, that something new comes out, it just validates what I have found and believed in this Bible for years. It's an interesting side note. Uh, I was listening to some research today, and they have now conclusively found out through uh, gene mapping and, and looking through all the gene sequences that they've got, two things. Number one, we are totally different than Neanderthal and Cro-Magnon man. Our gene sequence is totally different. Now, when they go back as far as they can and find uh, a human-like, 
they basically look like us as far back. I think 25,000 years was the oldest uh, remains that they discovered. Do you know their gene sequence, their DNA is the same as ours today? The same. That's fascinating. That, that blows evolution out of the water. Absolutely blows it out of the water. Not only that, we are nowhere near the chimpanzees and the apes. It could not come about. The other thing they found is that there was an event at some point that did two things. It merged two chromosomes. If you look at our chromosome numbers, chimpanzees have 48, we have 46. What happened, some event, some outside force fused our second set of chromosomes, fused two together. Proving once again, there is an intelligent designer out there that is doing things. The other thing is speech occurred rapidly, like almost into, we went from nonverbal communication to bang, all of a sudden we were talking. You can't get that through millions of years of evolution. That's called the Fox P2 chromosome that's in that DNA sequence. Fascinating research that now the more science they do, the more it proves that evolution was a belief and we have the facts to back up our trust in God and what he said back in Genesis, that we were created. We weren't evolved. We were created. What does that mean? I like to go back to Genesis 126 when it says, let us make man in our image. And that's exactly what he did. Now, this is a long tree to go around to get back to this point. If we're created in his image, unlike all the others, unlike the chimpanzees, unlike everything else, if we were created in his image, what is the number one trait that the father has and is known as the creator? We have the ability on this earth. Number one, we're taken from the earth no other species, no other animal, no other insect, no other organism was taken from the dust of the earth and had the spiritual component that was put inside that brought life into us. So we have a, a, a tie to the earth. We have this going on. And then we have that spiritual component that brought together, gives us dominion over the whole earth and gives us access to all the power of creation that the Father has available for us. It's absolutely powerful. When we realize our position, our authority in this world, we're not just an accident. How many children have been scarred for life when they heard, well, well you weren't planned. It was an oops, an accident, and yeah, here you are. And they go, sheesh. I'm really something special, ain't I? No, yes, you are. We're all special. Planned, unplanned, no matter what, God knows us and created. It was in his plan. You weren't an accident that you showed up exactly where you needed to be. We've got to work on this, this worthiness aspect. We'll get into that in a minute. Praise and thanksgiving, that's got to be part of it. We've got to come from a heart of gratitude, of appreciation, of love, joy, peace. If we can't operate there and stay there consistently. Now, this is one of the big things. We've got to stay there consistently to draw from that other universe, draw from that other realm. And then there's another component, a third component, where we pray for others. At the end of this, I will reach out and visualize 
maybe an infirmity that somebody's going in. That is an intercession. And, and we take up the battle for other people. And we put out of ourselves to that end. And we lift them up. We hold them up. We, we push some of what we've got in our life their way. Now, if you're pushing out of a life that is somewhat lacking, um, or you start to try to influence and push what you think they ought to do in their life, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. Father God knows what they need. We just need to be there to help them over the hump. Amen? How many times have we tried to pray our will into somebody else's lives, be it our children, our spouses, our friends, our co-workers? We try to manipulate and bring them into our box. It don't work. Never works. One was supposed to work that way. So how does prayer work? James 5.16. James 5.16. If any man see his brother in a sin which he is not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. We want to make sure that if somebody's in a situation that, you know, we go the extra mile for them, but we don't try to manipulate things and we don't try to foster and get, get things going. Now, go over to John or, or uh, James, yeah, I was in John there. You know what? That was good scripture, but that wasn't the one I was looking for. That was an op-ed right there. 516, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Now listen to this in the Amplified. Confess one to another, therefore your faults your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins. Boy, that brings a lot of it in. That's getting right down close to home, right? And pray also for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. Not only does this go beyond, we used to, quote that all the time for when we're laying hands on the sick and they'll recover. This is talking about restoring the heart, bringing that person out of the muck, just like we read. It's amazing how that dovetails right in. There in 1 John 5, 16, where it talks about the sin and going to each other, and here, restoring to a spiritual tone, the earnest, now listen to this, the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. I really like that. I'm going to have that on my refrigerator later tonight. I'm going to print that one off. The continual heart felt. There's something big time about this heart that God put in us. When we can get this together, when we can figure out how to use our heart to pray and not just our mind. So many of us are just in our mind praying. Father, I need this. Father, I need that. Father, I need this. And you know, this guy and that guy, they did me wrong. You need to deal with them. On and on and on it goes. 
So I want to tear this apart just a little bit here real quick. Number one, prayer needs to be heartfelt. Not just a mental list of needs. Not just a list of needs. You know, when I was looking forward to going out on a date with my wife before I met her, uh, I looked forward to just spending time with her. I wasn't there to say, you know, uh, here's the problems I've had, and I wish you could help me do this, 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 and this. I need my laundry done. I need my car washed. I need this, this, and this. Can you, can you make sure you handle that for me? And she'd go, what kind of fruitcake is this? That I No. We were looking for a relationship. We wanted to make a connection. And that is the second point that I found here lately, is making that connection with the Father. The verse that kept running through my mind, seek ye first the kingdom of God. You know what? Even further, take out the kingdom. Seek ye first God, Father, Jehovah. Seek him first. Seek to have an intimate relationship with him a heartfelt relationship, all the rest of this stuff falls in place. Isn't that what it says in Matthew? I think it's Matthew 6, 30 something, 31. That all these things will be added together. They'll be added. We'll take care of them. As long as we get that relationship right. If we can do that, we got something going on. We got a good thing going on, as the song says. Now, caution. Here's where we get into problems. If you're every day confessing in prayer your lack, your poor health, sadness, people problems, business problems, family problems, whatever it is that you're trying to go to God saying, do something with this. And you go back day after day after day after day after day. Did I say that enough? Beating the drum of lack and what you don't have in your life. What message are you sending out? I got lack and I want more of it. That's where my attention is focused. And the heavens send it right back to you. You want forgiveness? Send out forgiveness. You want blessing? Send out blessing. You want health? Send out prayers for health and healing. Don't look at the lack. Look at what you do have. If you cannot find joy and happiness right here, right now, exactly in this moment where you're sitting. It doesn't matter if all of a sudden, say you say, man, I need to get in shape. I'm out of shape. My, my blood pressure, my this, my that, my that. I need to get in shape. And you keep confessing that and you're continually out of shape. God's not going to say, okay, poof, all of a sudden you look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? It doesn't work that way. But there is a, a process within us that actually changes when we believe and we confess. Do you know that your body can and will heal itself of any and all infirmities if you will let it? So many people believe the diagnosis of the doctor. They believe the six o'clock news that, that this new pandemic is a killer and you got to do all these things. Don't worry about it. Why? Because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And we can fight off all of those if we do not take a seed that says, I don't have this in my life. 
I'm telling you, we got to get a hold of it. That's been the biggest thing is every day, start my day out. This is what I'm doing. Do what you want with it. I start my day out quietly before the Lord. Yes, if there's something going on when I wake up, Father, I need to figure out how to do this, this, and this. We got this situation. Can you help us out? And that's about it. Honestly, that's it. And then I start praising him for what he's given me. Praise you for, for air to breathe. I praise you for a nice, cool night and a good night's sleep. I praise you for my wife. I praise you for my family. I praise you for taking care of all of them. I pr not trying to push my will, right? Right. Like I say, this is what I'm doing. Take it or leave it. You know, you can tell me ah, and, and shut the video off if you want. But I'm telling you, it's made a drastic change in my life. My stress level's gone down. My health is better. My attitude towards life is exponentially better. I don't stress out about things. It drives some people nuts. I'm just not stressed out about it. I got a long way to go. Once in a while, I make a slip, I'll admit. But it's very seldom that I let that go and fester. Bring it back, close my eyes, count to 10, hit the reset button. And it works. It works. Ask the guys at work. I'm not the explosive hard ass that I used to be. I'm still hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guy over here. Comedy relief. But that is a big, big advantage when you can go through life that way. Focus on the answer you want. Focus on, and, and this is what is so exciting. When you get back to that quantum physics, they found that, that quantum particles, when you study them, if they are observed by people, act differently. They will move in certain directions. They will do things. We found that, that they set up a special telegraph something, and you can affect a quantum particle over here and a thousand miles away at the other end, whatever you do to this one will happen to this one. When they're observed, when you take away the human component and they found it when they're doing these experience experiments, they've got to have people watching because this whole thing operates there is something about when we focus on what's going on, they behave a certain way. That's the anointing. That is the real life, what we call anointing. It's God's creative power. And just now science is figuring out what it is. And here we've had it all along, didn't know what we had. If you focus on lack that's what you're going to get. So change your prayer life. Yes, ask. Yeshua told us, give us this day our daily bread. That was the only ask that he had in there. And then what? Forgive our trespasses. Keep us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, right? It's a pattern that none of us have seen, or very few of us. I shouldn't say none of us. I never saw it in all of that, total paradigm shift in the way I approach that. Do you truly believe you can have what you're asking for? That's the next component. To be in a heartfelt prayer, too many of us come to prayer time in doubt. We don't think we're actually going to get what we get. That's why many of us say, well, Father, I need a little more money. And we don't want to qualify it with an amount because why? Um, I might be disappointed. Is that faith? 
here's the deal. We don't know when we, when we launch these requests and we put them out there. And Prophet Steve and I have talked quite a bit about reaching forward and trying to pull that in. Out there in that other realm, there is no time. And that's the component that we can't wrap our minds around is there is no time in the spirit realm, in that other realm. Isn't that what the angel told Daniel? From the very moment you started your prayers and supplications, we were dispatched. It already was done. When they got here into this realm, they met with resistance. When they started to come through, they had to fight to bring it. So it took a little while to get here. Doesn't mean that it had not already been put in motion. You've got to understand that. Prayer, make your petition and let it roll and enjoy the ride until it manifests. That's the big key to all this. Matthew 21, 22. Matthew 21, 22. Twenty one and twenty two. And whatsoever you ask for in prayer, having faith and really believing, you will receive. Does it say you might receive? No. Whatever you ask for in prayer, having faith and really believing. We've got to get to that. We've got to get to where we really, truly believe God hears us and God answers. Yeah. John 14. Turn over there. John 14. Let's look at this that Yeshua said. John 14. And verse 12, I assure you most solemnly in the Amplified, I tell you, if anyone steadfastly believes in me, he, him, he will himself be able to do the things that I do. And he will do even greater things than these because I go to the Father. We have an access now. Remember, we started off talking about that. We have a better access point. 13, and I will do, I myself will grant whatever you ask in my name as presenting all that I am. And if you look this up, and I could flip it around, but I don't know if you'd see it, the I am's are capitalized. He's speaking as the father at this point. So that the Father may be glorified and extolled in and through the Son. Verse 14, yes, I will grant, I myself will do it for you, whatever you shall ask in my name. So why do we have doubt if we know that we can get it? Now, we've got we've to pay attention that if... We're praying something that is outside of the legal Torah bounds. You're not going to pray uh, if you're married and go, you know, my wife uh, is a little bit out of shape and she doesn't cook as much as she used to. It doesn't cook as good as she used to. I think I want to trade her in for a new model. And we pray, Father, I need a new wife. No, no, you don't. And you think you're going to get that prayer answered? Guess what? You just might get that prayer answered. But it's not God that's answering that prayer. And that's the point we got to understand. We need to do this. And that's where a lot of the new age folks miss it because they don't have the guidelines 
Remember how we used to say, Father, if it's your will, find out if it's his will. It's his will that we prosper and be in health. It's his will that we have the means to establish his covenant. It's his will that we are blessed to be a blessing. That there is abundance in our life and no lack in any area. That's the will of the Father. But it can't be because we want to consume it and keep it all to ourselves. It can't be with the wrong motive, with the wrong heart. God won't answer those prayers, but the dark side will answer those prayers. You don't think of the cults, the Satanists, that crowd has been doing this stuff and, and tapping into that power for centuries. God's children are just now waking up and figuring out that we've been lied to. The little nuggets that have been placed in rat poison in the midst. That's what rat bait is. It's 99% good, good food. That 1% of rat poison in there, that poison is what kills us and keeps us down. Well, we can't do that. We're not worthy. Beat them down, beat them down, beat them down. They got to be humble. They got to be, yeah, and we need to be humble, but we need to know that we are worthy. And that's the next thing. Do you really believe that we're worthy? Are you worthy for God to answer your needs? Only you can answer that. If you don't feel worthy, please reach out to one of us. would really like to talk. Because if you are a child of the Most High, if you have taken hold of his covenant, I love it. I always go back. One of my favorite passages in Isaiah 56. If the eunuch, the foreigner, whoever, will take hold of my covenant and keep my Sabbaths, him will I give a better place and a better name than of sons of natural born? Come on, you're worthy. Get over it. Act like the ambassador of the kingdom that you're meant to be. Wow, I can feel that from the bottom of my feet all the way up. Somebody, listen, you're worthy. Act like it. Quit moping around with this sad sack, sour puss, down in the mouth, horse shit. Okay, there I said it. Get over it. Laugh a little more. Be happy. You can always have it much worse. And if you continue the way you're going, you may just have what you're asking for. What's the end game? What's your heart in all of this? Third point. We all have basic needs, food, water, shelter. You know, the Maslow's hierarchy of, of needs. And once we get that, we feel secure and we can go on to other things. So, yes, that's what Yeshua was talking about. Give us this day our daily bread. Do we need to beat the drum for 20 minutes to God of what we're lacking in our lives? No. He knows. Is it wrong to want more? There's another good question you got to ask yourself. Is it wrong to want a better life, to want to have more? To want to have a nice house, to want to have whatever. No, it's not wrong. That's what gets us out of bed in the morning. That's why socialism doesn't work. Communism doesn't work because who wants to get out of bed if you don't have the opportunity to make a better life? America, you're about to find out what that's all about. Beyond, yes, reach for the stars. Push the limit. Make God smile a little bit, would you? He's a creative force. Hey, look, everything that was created, number one, a, a law in, in physics, 
says that matter or thermodynamics, I think matter is neither created nor destroyed. It just changes form, right? If that's the case, do you think there is a lack of money? Gold, sir, silver, whatever you want to say. Is there a lack of resources in God's kingdom? He created everything in abundance and said it was good. It's good, it's good, it's good. All we've got to do is get in the right spot with the right heart, the right smile on our face, and we can absolutely reach out and pull it in. If we don't doubt, if we don't focus on lack, we can have it. Matthew 6, 19, again, I said before, treasures in heaven, right? Put up treasures in heaven. We've been going through some food stores. Just a side note, been going through some food stores. We thought they were long-term storage food stores, right? We get them out of the package, and some of them were dated 2011, 2010, whatever, and they're dog food now. We didn't, uh, and this was stuff that we, we got in and took in, uh, and we're going through these because you need to check your food stores. Just because you put up a can of Jack Mackerel in the year 2000 doesn't mean it's going to be good today, okay? Go through your food stores, and to this pandemic, if it's taught us nothing else, prepare Prepare, prepare. What if you can't go to the store? What if you can't do this, this, or this, okay? So check your, go through your food stores, open up a package and make sure they still are edible. I mean, there's some of that stuff we brought out, cook, stinks up the kitchen and the dogs won't even eat it. Now, what if we were just relying on that and said, no, I got all of that back here and we got, we got cases and cases of it. And then come time we needed it and we couldn't even eat it. That would have been a sad thing. So for, for somebody, please go through your stores and make sure that tuna is okay yet, right? I say tuna. Everybody bought some tuna when they were going through all that stuff. It's cheap protein, right? Check it out. Make sure. Rotate your stores. Use up some of it. Put it back. Basic 101 storage. Can we feel happy now? That's the challenge that I want to put out to everybody here. Can you get an attitude? If you cannot be happy right now, even though your life may be, have some turmoil, even though you're going through a tough patch, I've seen people and talked to people that are going through stage four cancer that have a better attitude and outlook on life than people that have got a million dollars in the bank account and not a worry in the world. These people are rich. These people know that life is more than just what you can get. It's about an attitude. Can we be happy now? Because that's where the real creation comes from. We pull from the future to bring into our now. What we do is when we plant these seeds, we plant them out here and we come into them. All right? We walk into what we have requested. It's not in our past. That's baggage back there. That's stuff that we need to, we need to release the baggage. Get away from it. Quit looking over your shoulder. Quit worrying about what happened back then. It doesn't matter. Who cares? It's about now. We got to feel happy. We got to feel it, even though our lives are going in circles. Isn't that what? what uh, Yeshua said to Peter 
Peter, you took your eyes off of me and the winds and the waves and you started sinking. That's when you started sinking. You weren't sinking when you were living in the now. Now I'm walking on the water. Now I see Jesus. Now I'm going that way. Big lesson there, folks. We got to come, and that's the other thing here. We got to come from a position of righteousness. When, when we read through that uh, uh, in James 5.16, the righteous man, the prayers of a righteous man, we've got to come from a position of righteousness. Go to 1 Peter 3, 8. And yes, I'm not going to get done with all this today. We'll finish up next week, and it'll be so glorious. 1 Peter 3, 8. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one to another. Love as brethren. Be pitiful. Be courteous. And I'm going to read this from the Amplified just because it's easier to, to uh, uh, understand. Finally, all of you should be of one and the same mind, united in spirit, sympathizing with one another, loving each other as brethren of one household, compassionate, courteous, tenderhearted, and humble. Do we need to beat each, over, each other over the head? No. We need to be there for each other. If one hurts, we all hurt. If one has success, we should all be happy for them. Verse 10. No, excuse me. Verse 9. Never return evil for evil or insult for insult, scolding, tongue lashing, berating. Now I've gone to meddling. Actually, Peter went to meddling. But on the contrary, blessing, praying for their welfare praying for their happiness, praying for their protection, and truly pitying and loving them. Have you been hurt by a family member? Have you been hurt by somebody, a co-worker? Have you been hurt by a spouse? Our flesh wants to, you know what they did to me? Not what the word says here. That's not what Peter's telling us to do, telling us to be thankful, to bless them, to wish them well, to pray God's blessing on their life. So different than the way most of us live our lives, right? Verse 10, for let him who wants to enjoy life and see good days, in parentheses, good, whether apparent or not, Keep his tongue free from evil and his lips from guile, treachery, and deceit. If all we're praying about is lack, let him turn away from wickedness and shun it. Let him do right. Let him search for peace, harmony, undisturbed from fears, agitating passions, and moral conflicts, and seek it eagerly. Do not merely desire peaceful relations with God, with your fellow man, and with yourself, but pursue and go after them. He's saying, come up to a higher vibration and stay there. Love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness. No, I'm not going into that Fruit of the Spirit series. You've been over it. There's some good teaching out there. But that's what he's saying. Bring it up and stay up here. Don't wallow in the mud. You can't soar with the eagles if you're what? Wallowing with the pigs. For the eyes of the Lord, listen to this. Eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, those who are upright and in right standing with God. His ears are attentive to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who practice evil, who oppose them to frustrate them and defeat them. Wow, that says mouthful. You want to be on the positive side of all that, or do you want to stay over here and be on the negative? 
your choice. I'm going to stop there. We're going to get into the rest of this and tear it apart next week. We got to change our lives. This week, I encourage you, and, and we'll go over it again next week. Spend less time talking to God and more time listening for him. Do you get what I just said? Spend less time. Limit your request to a few, a very limited few requests. Intercessors, same thing. Quit, quit trying to impose a will. Father, you know what they need. And I thank you for it. And then just spend time in their presence, in his presence. Make that connection. When I get together and, and uh, with, with family and friends, they don't want to hear about all the things that are going on in my life and how miserable I am. They want to connect with me and have that relationship, that love, right? And that's what we want. When your grandkids come sit on your lap, you know what's going on? No, come here, give... Give grandpa, give grandma a hug, and you spend time with them. I think that's key. We'll get into that more next week. Father, praise your holy name. I thank you, Father, for everything that you have, have brought out. Right now, Father, I'm, I'm seeing there is someone, I don't know if you've had an accident or uh, an infection, but right behind the nasal cavity at the top of the, the jaw, the top of the teeth, in the cheekbones, put your hands there. Father God, in the name of Yeshua, let that healing flow. Yep, yep. Father, right now, I curse the condition that's causing the problem. Father God, heal completely restore mend whatever needs to be mend take three deep breaths through your nose and praise god for the healing amen amen hallelujah there's somebody right lung lower lung I don't know if the doctors, you just come back and the doctors said there's something going on there. Or you just feel something. Father God, in the name of Yeshua, if that's you, hold your hand over that area. Father God, in the name of Yeshua, I curse the condition that's come into this lung. I command it to be dissolved. I demand full function. in the name of Yeshua, that they would breathe and be able to take deep, long breath. In Yeshua's name, heal and restore. Father God, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Is there anything else? There's some man, probably a kidney stone or something, you're having problems going to the bathroom. If that's you, you know exactly what's going on. Father God, in the name of Yeshua, heal, bust up those stones, bust up those, whatever obstruction is going on. I curse the condition and I command healing to flow, no matter what it is could be prostate. Father God, in the name of Yeshua, heal totally that whole urinary tract system. In the name of Yeshua, be whole and be healed. Father God, thank you. Be with us, bless us, continue to do miracles and the miraculous in our lives. Thank you 
for all the revelation knowledge. Now be with each and every member, each and every citizen of the kingdom of God. Bless us all with your presence. In Yeshua's name, amen. Thank you. It's been my privilege and honor. And we'll see you again next week. We'll finish this up.